In this question on longitude and latitude, we are told that an aircraft flies from point P, which is on latitude 12 degree north and longitude 11 degree west to point Q, that is on latitude 12 degree north and longitude 11 degree east, in two hours, and then it changes its course and arrives at point S on latitude 44 degree north and longitude 11 degree east in six hours after leaving point Q. Our mandate is to calculate correct to three significant figures. First, the total distance covered, the average speed of the aircraft, and the time difference between Q and S. So let's try and locate the point P, Q, and S on our globe as given here. First, we are given the mandate that point P is on 12 degree north latitude. So normally we start from the origin, the center of the globe, and then we measure outwards. Like the latitude 12 degree north, we'll take it starting here as origin and go up because ideally this is the north, south, east, and west. Okay, so we are taking 12 degree north, so we can append this as 12 degrees north, and then 11 degree west. West is to this side, so this can be our 11 degree west. Okay, that's the longitude. So the intersection between the longitude 11 degree west and the latitude 12 degree north will have to be our point P. So here, you can just append this as point P. And then, in the same way, we can look at point Q. It is on the same latitude as P. That's why they are sharing 12 degree north and 12 degree north. But now Q is 11 degree east as the longitude. So this other one to the east, we can take as our 11 degree east. And the point of intersection of this longitude and this latitude, which is here, that will have to be the point Q. And then we're also told that from Q, the aircraft changes its course and arrives at point S that is now on latitude 44 degree north and longitude 11 degrees. So we are noticing that the longitude for S and the longitude for Q, they are the same. So it is still this 11 degree east. And by the time we are taking 44 degree north, that will be further than 12 degree north that we have before. So we can take this as our 44 degrees north. And the point of intersection between this longitude 11 degree east and this latitude 44 degree north, this place, that will have to be our point S. So, so we have our diagram as shown here. And if you want to just look at what we are being asked, first we are being asked the total distance covered. That will be... First, the distance from P to Q, as shown here, and then from Q to S, as shown here. So, the distance that is covered by the plane is first the distance covered from P to Q, and then Q to S. And if you want to look at the means of finding that distance, let's try and finish up this diagram. Okay? So, from here, we can have some radius to the north and south pole. And this is actually radius r. Okay, this is also small r. But there's another radius we can look at from the center of the globe to the point on the longitude and latitude here. Okay, the point on the great circle. And then we can have this and this. So this other one, we are having them as the radius of the heart r, which was given as 6,400 kilometers. So our mandate here is to find the total distance traveled, and that will be the distance PQ along the parallel of latitude plus the distance QS along that longitude. So we can find that the total distance we are looking for is nothing but the length of the hack PQ plus the length of the hack QS. The plane starting from P moving to Q, that's PQ. Then from Q moving to S, that is QS. So that is very interesting. We cannot go to find means of finding PQ and QS. And this is what I want to show us. So then just follow this through. For the distance PQ, if you look at what we have, we have something like this, that this is point P and this is point Q. And then we have some angle in between them. And it's looking as if we are dividing that angle in two, in which here, from the center to the left, it is actually here, here. And we have measured 11 degrees first to the west, and then to the other side, we have another 11 degrees to the east. So the total angle in this case, if you are to look at it, you can say we have some alpha that we are looking at. It will be the sum of these two 11 degrees plus 11 degrees, and that will be 
22 degrees. So this is the angular difference or the angular sum because we are even adding them. We are adding them because they are going in different directions. By the time we get to look at the second case, we see that we'll have to subtract because they are in the same direction. So that we cut out. So we are seeing this angle here that it is nothing but 22. And then we identify this as R and this is also R. So the first distance PQ that we are looking at will be nothing but alpha over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. But now, we are not giving r at all because this r is the radius along the parallel of latitude. What we are giving is the radius r, the radius of the heart. Now, if you want to look at the 2, this is going to come out very, very clearly now. If we take this as the center of the heart, the origin, and we have this, let's say this is some point t. If you look at that diagram critically, we are going to see that what we have is that this is point t and then to the right we have this as point q and then that t is also coming straight down to the center of the globe and then we have this as the radius r that we are given so we have this particular r here from t to q is r just like t to p is r and already we have measured out the angle from that origin to the parallel of latitude we got this to be 12 degrees to the north, okay? And then by reason of understanding of trigonometry, we know that this 12 is also the same as this angle here, that this is also 12 because it's alternate to this parallel of latitude that we're given originally. And looking at this now, what do we have? If nothing but, we have Sokatua. This is actually Sokatua because it's a right angle triangle here. And we have the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse, and we have the angle. That is nothing but cos. So what we have here is inherently we have that cos cos theta you can, can just take it as cos 12 okay it's nothing but adjacent which is r over hypotenuse which is capital r so that the radius that we are going to be look, using here is nothing but r is equal to the capital r that's the radius of the heart cos the angle of latitude okay so if we have this then our equation inherently will become something like this so our equation now instead of us just writing out we can now say that is depicting that this equation is nothing that pq is nothing but alpha over 360 multiplied by 2 pi instead of small r now we have r cos theta where theta is the angle on the parallel of latitude so this is what we're going to be doing for pq and then we're also going to see what we can do for sq okay now if you are to consider the distance from q to s what we have is something like this we have this as the center of the globe and then we have this particular half coming like this and we have this point first point q and then on the other hand we have point s now the distance between them is this q s here but what we are looking for first and foremost is that we want to depict how we can find that angle between them now from the center of the globe to point q we have been given that now we need to measure that angle as the parallel of latitude this was given as 12 degrees okay but then from that center also to s we gave it as 44 degrees and now the angle between them this angle if I still maintain that, I'll call it alpha. You can see that alpha is going to be the difference between 12 and 44. That alpha here is going to be 44 minus 12. And that is 32 degrees. So this angle here is nothing but 32 degrees. And then in this particular case, we noted that this is R, which is also the same as OQ. OS and OQ, they are both R. So the distance QS for this particular case, our QS is nothing but alpha here over 360 because it's just the length of an arc to multiply by 2 pi r and that r is the radius of the heart which we are giving us 6400 kilometers so we have all the parameters that we we need we have gotten the angular difference we have gotten the angular sum we have gotten the different angles that we need we can just put them together and try and solve out this particular question now going back to the formula for our total distance that we are looking for originally you can say that total distance is pq what is pq pq we said it is alpha over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r cos theta and theta is the 
angle of the parallel of latitude. Alpha is the angular term of the longitude of P and the longitude of Q, okay? Plus the distance QS, that is actually, let me call this alpha 1, let me call this alpha 2 over 360 multiplied by 2 pi R straight and direct. So if you want to put in those values, just like we got initially, alpha 1 is 11 plus 11, which is 22 over 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi we are given as 3.142 multiplied by the radius of the earth 6400 then cos the parallel of latitude which is cos 12 so this is actually pq plus qs and qs is the half of 2 which is the angular difference between 12 and 44 we got that to be 32 over 360 multiplied by 2 pi L is 3.142 multiplied by R is 6400. Okay, so we can make use of our calculator to get this to say we are having first 22 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 times 3.142 multiplied by 6400 cos 12. Okay, so this is 2404. 0.035 so we have 2404.035 as distance pq plus in the other case we have 32 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 times 3.142 multiplied by 6400 so that is what 3574.0 898 and if we are to sum the two so this is our answer plus the initial answer 2404.035 okay so what's that sum 5978.93 so this is 59 Seven eight point nine three, but we are asked to get that to the nearest correct to the correct to three significant. But we have to get, <clears throat> but we have to get that correct to three significant figures. So that means we need to look at one, two, three figures. Whatever is coming after, we need to round up or round down as appropriate. Now eight is what is coming under, and that is greater than four. Number between five and nine, we we'll round up to one and add to the number immediately preceding it. So we we'll round it up to one and that to seven. That will become five nine eight zero kilometers. So we have this as five nine eight zero kilometers as the total distance that the aircraft covers in moving from P to Q and then from Q to S. So that's the solution to A part. Okay. So you can say we just got our total distance to be 5980 kilometers approximately. Now, in the question B, we are told to find the average speed of the aircraft. And that average speed is going to be nothing but the total distance divided by the total time. Okay, the total time that the plane took in traversing all those journeys from P to Q and Q to S. Now, interestingly, we just got our total distance to be 5980 kilometers approximately. If you are working, you make use of the original value, not the approximate value. So if that is going to be the case here, we are just going to have this as what's our original value from the calculator. We have 5978.93, 5978.93 divided by what's the total time? Initially, in moving from P to Q, it took two hours. Then from Q to S, took six hours. So we have two plus six hours so we have this and we have this in kilometers so if you want to look at that average speed you can just say that speed is nothing but where's our calculator this is our initial answer we can say answer divided by two plus six is eight so we can just get that to be seven four seven point three six six five nine okay maybe point okay three six seven this is seven four seven point three six seven but again we are asked to get it correct to three significant figures and we want to do that we are looking at three significant figures one two three any number after it we are going to round up or down three we need to round that down and rounding it down mean down to zero 
it will not have effect on the other numbers. So the average speed is nothing but 747 kilometers per hour. So that is the average speed of this particular aircraft in journeying from point P to Q and then Q to S. Then finally, in the third question, we are asked to find the time difference between Q and S. Let's look critically at this, at this longitude. You can see that Q and S are lying on the same longitude. And for locations that are on the same longitude, they are not going to have any time difference. So we can just say there is no time difference between S and Q as asked from the question. So that is why the location like Lagos and London they're on the same axis of longitude and that is why they are sharing that same time zone and there's not going to be any time difference between them so that is all we need to do we've answered the question holistically and we are good and fine